Welcome to Eastland English. Take an English road trip in Canada with us. We never had a miserable day on our Canadian road trip. The weather that day was as close to miserable as we had had so far. On the other hand, we were quite excited to be driving towards Cape Spear because Cape Spear was our ultimate destination, the farthest east you can go in Canada. Today was another big driving day for us. Newfoundland is a massive island, and it's easy to underestimate how much time you will need to see the whole island. We had a 1,000-kilometer drive ahead of us to reach St. John's, so we decided to break the journey into two legs and stop halfway to rest in Gander. Ironically, in order to reach the farthest eastern point, we would have to drive mostly south for two days. As usual on a road trip, and many times over, we had to stop for gas. In Thailand, where we come from, all of the gas stations are full service. And that means, as a customer, you don't have to do anything yourself. All you have to do is drive up to the pump and tell the gas station attendant how much gas you want, then wait for them to do everything. However, here in Canada, things are very, very different. Every gas station is self-service, and that means you do everything yourself. All right, let's get started. For safety reasons, turn the car off. First, you have to open the gas tank. You open the lid to the gas tank and then unscrew the gas cap. This thing here is called the gas cap. Always remember, lefty loosey, righty tighty. So opening anything with the screw, you'll screw to the left. Next, you have to choose what grade of gasoline you want. You cannot choose diesel because this is a gas car. Diesel is for diesel cars. We're going for regular gasoline. There are three different grades of gasoline here, as there are in most gas stations in Canada. We want the cheap stuff, so we're just going to press regular. However, before you do, you have to pull the nozzle out, and that will trigger the machine to tell you to select the grade of gasoline you want. Because we want regular, we're pressing regular. The gas pump will reset to zero. You insert the nozzle all the way into the gas tank and start the gas. The price of the gasoline is $1.66.9 per liter here, which is significantly more than Nova Scotia or Ontario, but similar to that of Quebec. When the gas tank is full, you'll hear a click and the gas will stop. If you'd like to top it up a little bit more, you can squeeze a tiny bit more, and then we fill it up all the way. It clicks again. That should be about enough. You pull out the nozzle. This is called a nozzle. Put it back here. Replace your gas cap. This is incredibly important. If you don't replace the gas cap, it could be a safety hazard, and you might lose some gasoline. Again, righty-tighty. To close it firmly, you'll hear a little click when it's completely closed. Then close the lid to the gas tank. And the final step, don't forget, you have to go in and pay for the gasoline. <laughs> so let's go in and pay. With a full tank of gas and even fuller hearts, we hit the road again. Our route would take us back past the spectacular views of sea ice that filled the ocean. These scenes would be the last time that we would witness sea ice, but we would see many other magnificent things on our journey. 
Because of our decision to take two days to drive to Cape Spear, we had a little extra time to explore this beautiful island and poke around in some other stores. The first interesting place we found seemed quite promising. We're in the back country of Newfoundland. There are possibly two or three hundred houses here, but we found something pretty special. Look at this dark pickle and then wild berries of Newfoundland and Labrador. I am very interested in trying the wild berries from around here. What else is there here, Yudi? I see art, gifts, books, cafe. Ice cream! Ice cream! Okay. Let's try to find some wild berry ice cream. So let's go in and have a look. Yes. Unfortunately, although this unique little store was open, they did not have any ice cream in stock yet. Look at the last word of the name. How do you pronounce it? We pronounce that word shop as well, Yudi. It's supposed to be like the old way of spelling shop. I so see. we just simply say shop. Got it. Check it out. Even though the outdoor shop used the old-fashioned spelling of the word, there was nothing old-fashioned about the equipment that they sold. Everything seemed geared for modern outdoor pursuits. And the equipment that they sold would be perfect for people who wanted to explore nature using vehicles. ATVs in the back. And these are engines. Look at the size of the machine. Wow. <laughs> That's an outboard motor, we call it. Outboard. Outboard motor. You put it's that a on a boat. Of boat. Yeah, you put it on a boat. It drives it's the boat. Great. Because we had to double back through the same area that we had driven after debarking from the ferry. We kept an eye out for caribou and moose. We did see a moose, but it was very shy and too quick for us to record it. On the other hand, our luck was much better with caribou. This is a male caribou, as can be seen by the fact that it has much larger antlers than the females that we encountered previously. Come on, turn, turn, turn. Turn your face to me. Oh yeah, he turned a little bit. This male was completely alone, which is surprising because we had learned that caribou are normally herd animals that travel in groups. It's quite possible that the lack of predators on the island of Newfoundland gives these caribou the courage to wander around on their own. They don't have to worry about being hunted or eaten by other animals. reached our ultimate destination, Cape Spear Lighthouse National Historic Site. We got out of the car and were faced with the fiercest winds we had experienced on our road trip. We had to brace ourselves against the weather and wear all of our warmest clothes. This area is famous for its high winds. If you come to visit here, make sure you are well prepared. Walking quickly helped to keep us warm, and we had to hide behind buildings to record our voices. Cape Spear Lighthouse is famous for many things, but Cape Spear is also why we came out to Newfoundland. This is a lighthouse up here. We are here, walking down, and this is the most easterly point in Canada. This is why we've come here, because Eastland English has the name Eastland, that's my last name, and that is the farthest eastern land in Canada. So that, right there, where we're going, is Eastland Canada. How far east can you go? 
Let's go to Eastland. The wind was blowing so hard that we turned around and walked backwards to try to keep warm. Very, very windy here on the Cape. <laughs> How is the temperature? What do you think? It must be below zero. It would blow like this. This is it. Eastland, Canada. The furthest eastern point you can go in Canada. And this is why we drove 3,035 kilometers to see and experience this. Was it worth it? Definitely. <laughs> I am struggling with holding the camera. Oh, yes, and I am literally being blown away by this experience. The wind is blowing so hard, it's going up my nose and freezing my nose. <laughs> 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 the gusts of wind were so strong that they not only made it difficult to record our audio, but also made it nearly impossible to keep the camera steady. I tried my best to get a good panoramic shot of the ocean, but the camera kept getting knocked around by the wind. Even with a tripod, this sequence would have been difficult to shoot smoothly. In mid-May, they say that you can sometimes see whales here. But we couldn't see any. The best month to see whales is in July and August. During World War II, Cape Spear was identified as a strategic place to build a coastal defense battery, or bunker with cannons, because of its position in relation to shipping routes between North America and Britain. German submarines would often patrol this area, seeking Allied ships to torpedo. The two 10-inch guns that were placed here would have been able to sink a submarine if they hit one. Look at the size of that cannon. Doesn't it seem to you that that cannon is not pointed at the correct place? <laughs> correct, exactly. Why do they block it like that? Yeah, it must have been elevated. Of course it must have been elevated. We're walking up to the lighthouse and we found on this side of the cape, there's far less wind. Makes it much more manageable. At first when we got here, I got out of the car and felt the wind and said to Yudi, hmm, maybe we should reconsider this. It was so cold, but luckily she pushed me and we decided to get out and vlog this. Thank you, Yudi. Hiking up this beautiful path towards the lighthouses was a welcome workout for us. Considering that we had spent most of the last two days in the car. With our equipment and our heavy clothing weighing us down, we were getting some really good exercise. The view was breathtaking. The Atlantic Ocean to our left and the shimmering sunlight reflecting off of the newest lighthouse ahead of us. Oh blown, blown off the path. Oh, yeah. The wind and the weather together make me tired twice as much. This lighthouse was erected in 1955 and is made of cement. Although the cement structure was built to replace the original lighthouse, they took the actual light from the first lighthouse and moved it here. Lighthouses are usually tall, cylindrical structures with flashing lights at the top used to signal ships where the land is. They serve both the purposes of safety and as navigational aids. Easy walk. Finally, we reached the top of the hill where the original lighthouse is situated. This is actually the second lighthouse built in Newfoundland, and it began operation in September of 1836. This site was designated a National Historic Site on May 15, 1962, and is operated by Parks Canada. It is a cube-shaped two-story building with the light tower in the center. 
In this shot, I tried to tell you about the inside of the lighthouse, but there was too much distortion due to the wind noise. Throughout most of its time in operation, it was run by a member of the Cantwell family. It has been restored inside and now acts as a museum. All of the interior furnishings and equipment are as they were in the 1830s, almost 200 years ago. The cost of admission is $8.50 for adults and $7 for seniors. Children can get in for free. Woo! It's time! I cannot take it anymore! Okay, let's go back to the car. You'd think it would be easy. That's our car way down there. So we have a windy walk ahead of us. Interestingly, the name Cape Spear does not come from the word for the weapon, but instead from the French word espoir, which means hope. This is probably due to the feeling sailors had after a long ocean crossing from Europe. Cape Spear, or Cap d'Espoir, would have been the first land they saw after weeks or even months at sea filling those sailors with hope. We can surely say that this beautiful piece of nature and the historical buildings filled us with hope as well. To be continued! <laughs>